using its characteristics of modern economic growth. So what characteristics of modern economic growth QSNETs uh, had identified? So in case of the question comes, uh, how QSNETs define modern economic growth and what are the different features of modern economic growth which, which he identified? So, I mean, how will you answer this? So first of all, let's define what modern economic growth in terms of uh, QSNETs words. So he said this, one, he said this, that modern economic growth is the increase in the capacity of the economy to provide diverse economic goods, one. So definition, there are, uh, there are several uh, parts to the definition. I'm just writing one by one definition. Modern economic growth is a long-term rise in the capacity to supply diverse economic goods Its population. And this seems to be right, right? Because uh, this is like a feature of economic maturity that you're able to provide uh, to your population diverse economic goods, not only, uh, not only one kind. Second, uh, this growing capacity is based on the advanced technology. So you are able to provide the diverse economic goods to your population because there is a technological advancement, right? This growing capacity is based on advanced technology, right? But you also have to understand one thing that uh, this is a precondition for economic growth that uh, sort of, uh, uh, that before, I mean, of course, once economic growth is going to happen, that is happening because of the advancement in technology, but that is a necessary condition, not the sufficient one. So maybe a country has advanced technology, but it is not able to grow because of various other reasons. Then, and the institutional and the institutional and ideological adjustments adjustments <clears throat> that it demands that it demands now you have to understand one thing that uh, uh, the society should also be ready to use that technological advancement for its own betterment so in case if the uh, institutional changes have not happened or in case if the attitudinal changes have not happened in the population to use that advanced technology, you will not be able to grow. So that is also a precondition. Uh, so these are the three parts of the definition. Now, what are the different characteristics of uh, modern economic growth? Let us just write that. Features. modern economic growth. One, there is high rates
of population and output per head. <clears throat> So he said this that you look around the world, uh, this these industrialized nations, and you look at when the economic growth picked up in these countries, and you look at the 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 period from which economic growth actually picked up these in these countries. For example, Britain, right? So when industrial revolution happened, so you look at now the output per head before industrial revolution and after it and the population before and after it, you will certainly find that there is a huge increase in population after growth. There is a huge increase in output per capita after growth, that is income per capita, right? So that is one feature which he has seen in almost all the countries which have experienced economic growth. Then, high rates, of factored productivity, high rates of factor productivity, right? I said this, that uh, uh, factor productivity would mean that whatever inputs you have in the economy, with what efficiency you're using these inputs. And he says this, that you look at uh, the countries in which modern economic growth has happened, you'll find this, that these countries have experienced actually high rates of uh, total factor productivity, right? Uh, so, so it means that the inputs they have been used more efficiently in these countries. One, then high rates of structural transformation. High rates of structural transformation. Now, when you say high rates of structural transformation, you mean that, uh, uh, don't you think that in most of these countries in which economic growth has happened, the share of population which was dependent upon the primary activities, for example, uh, primary sector activities, for example, the share of the population which was dependent upon agriculture, now that share has gone down or the share of the output which is coming from agriculture that has gone down and the share of the service, share of the industry has, has increased. So there is a gradual shift from agriculture towards industry. And if you look at now, there is even a shift from industries to services. So he says this, that this is a gradual shift in the, in the, in the structural transformation, right? So that is one thing. Then you have high rates of High rates of social and ideological transformation high rates of social and ideological transformation. He says this that uh, uh, there is uh, there is the there is the social and ideological transformation also in in most of these countries which have experienced uh, uh, economic growth because you'll find is that there is an improved uh, attitudinal changes there are um, uh, more broad or liberal attitudinal changes which have happened in these countries right so you'll also find that the socially equalization has happened in these countries. Economically equalization has happened, happened in these countries. So these are social and ideological uh, changes which have happened in, uh, in these countries, right? Then you have the propensity of the economically developed countries of 
of the developed countries or economically developed countries. Right. To reach out to the rest of the world for markets and raw materials. So don't you think this is true? This seems to be true, right? So these economically developed countries, they reach out to, uh, to, to economically less developed countries for raw materials. They buy cheap raw materials from these countries and, and then they manufacture uh, the output in their own countries and sell the same manufactured goods back into these less developed countries at high prices. So they make profits, right? Their cost is less and their profits are more. So this is also one uh, one thing which has happened, and all of this has been uh, this this all, all of this was uh, was done due to an improved transportation or the fall in the transportation cost. You can say uh, not only transportation could be communication, globalization, all of that. Then you have. This is again an important. Uh, uh, characteristic, the limited spread of this modern economic growth to only one third only one third of the world's population. And this is true. How many countries you can actually say they're very developed, right? Uh, this has uh, the, the benefits of the entire modern economic growth has not trickled down to the less developed countries. They haven't, right? So those benefits of modern economic growth, they are only for the developed countries. Most of the developing countries and the less developed countries are still suffering. And the benefits have not, uh, they, they have not uh, got much benefits of the, of the modern economic growth. That is one thing, right? And uh, all of this has also led to the unequal power sharing between the developed countries and the developing countries. So just because developed countries has much more and a larger share of the modern economic growth, they tend to exploit uh, the less developed countries. Now, exploitation could be in terms of economic exploitation. May not be very direct political exploitation as used to happen earlier, but still that is true, right? So this is a very brief video about uh, what are the different features of uh, modern economic growth, right? So I hope it was useful to you. Thank you, Peter.